Bless God, Kenneth began to pray. And he, he knew what to pray. He said, Dear God, I'm a sinner. I thank you that I, all I need to know is somebody loved me, and I believe old Jack here loves me. And he said, and I, I have mercy on my soul and save me, and I now trust Jesus as my Savior, and bless your little pea picking heart. The fireworks of heaven turn loose in my soul. I want you to know the sparklers began to sparkle, and the firecrackers went off, and the Roman candles filled the sky, and glory to God, I jumped up off my knees. I said, good night, this guy was going to hell, and now he's going to heaven. He was going to burn the fires of torment. Now he's going to walk down golden streets forever. I said, bless God. I walked back up to my preacher, and I said, Brother Sizemore, would it be okay with you if I just did this all the time from now on? And God said something going in my soul. Something burning on the inside. I've got to be a soul winner. I can't help it. I've got to lead folks to Christ. I can't help it. I'm saying there is a call from within. And you listen to me well right now. That's all the call you need. Well, do you feel called to preach? Well, do it and ask God when you get to heaven if it's okay. It's time some of you rascals lit a fire to your dreams of making money. And you walk inside the pastor's study and say, But I just don't feel called to preach. I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. But preach anyhow. If you want a pastor, get you a tent and preach in a tent somewhere. Build you a brush arbor. When I was a kid preacher, I went all over this East Texas area preaching on country on country roads. I'd get I'd, I'd get me a fella could play the accordion, and I'd go all over these. I'm talking about Big Spring, I'm uh, not Big Spring, uh, Spring Hill. I'm talking about a Glade Water. I'm talking about Big Sandy. I'm talking about Harleton. I'm talking about Hallsville. I'm talking about Wascom. I'm talking about Tatum. I'm talking about all these little towns around here. I'd go out in the woods and build me a brush arbor and get me a guy who could play the accordion. I'd go from house to house and say, we're going to have an accordion recital and preaching tonight. And bless God, that's before the box was invented. Nobody had a television set in those days. And most folks couldn't afford a radio. And I'd preach in these campaigns around here. Little old revival. You say, who's sponsoring you? Jesus is sponsoring that too. And God never struck me with lightning because I wasn't called. I'm saying God gave me a call from within. America's going to hell while you said this. I don't feel a call. Oh, shut up. You make me want to throw up and sometimes vomit and then sometimes puke. Hello. Black girl in our grade school. Teacher was... Telling the story of the Good Samaritan. The teacher said one time there was a fellow went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. And all of a sudden the thieves came up and they hit him and they beat him and they kicked him and they hit him and they hit him again and hit him again and hit him again. And the guy was there and he was half dead and blood is shooting out of his mouth and out of his nose. And, 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 and the guy was about half naked and half dead. And there, he said a fellow came by, walked over, looked at him. Teacher said, boys and girls, what would you have done? The little black girl said, I'd have thrown up. <laughs> America's going to hell while you're trying to figure if God wants you to get people saved. God doesn't call you, surrender. Volunteer. I said to my people, not only is there a call from within, there's a call from without. Not only did the apostles say, we cannot but speak the things we've seen and heard. It's in here. It's in here. I said, it's in here. There's a call from the inside. But I said, not only is there a call from within, there's a call from without. Come over. Into Macedonia and help us. 
Come over into Gladewater and help us. Come over into Marshall and help us. Come over into Shreveport and help us. It's one reason why I'm here this week. We're starting some bus routes from Hammond and Longview. I said, my people, another reason why you're nervous and I'm not normal, this is a call from within and there's also a call from without. I believe there's a heaven and a hell. I believe people that die without God go to hell. I believe people that go to hell burn in hell. I believe people that burn in hell burn forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And don't you sit there and tell me that you got a husband sitting beside you in the home and laying beside you in the bed and sitting beside you across the table and he's only one heartbeat from burning in hell forever. Don't you tell me you love him and don't tell me you believe this Bible. I'm trying to say there's a call from without. I said to my people, not only... Am I like I am because of the call of within? Not only am I like I am because of the call of without, but I said thirdly, there's a call of above. Wherefore, seeing we're being compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, aren't you happy when you're watching the edge of night that John the Baptist is looking on you? You kids, listen to this dirty, sorry rock music. Aren't you pleased when you stop and realize the Apostle Paul is looking down on you? I said, I've got to keep going. And as long as I'm pastor of this church in Hammond, Indiana, we'll go on Sunday and Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday. There's a call from the inside, a call from without, and there's a call from above. Don't you tell me to ease up, Buster. Don't you tell me to drive like some of you deadheads are. I'm saying, why do we have it Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday? I'll tell you why. There's a call from here. There's a call from out there. And there's a call from up there. You want a call to preach? I've given you three of them tonight. And that's all a call you need. Light a match tonight to your dreams of that beautiful house. <laughs> Light a match to your career. Light a match to your medical practice. Light a match to your nursing practice. Light a match to your legal profession. Light a match to your aspiration to make a million dollars. And surrender your life to serve God full time and savor the grace of God. I've got a call. I've got three. One from the inside, one from the outside, and one from above. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. I want to tell you, there is a hell and there is a heaven. And it's time you live like it. Don't tell me not to build a soul winning church. Don't tell me not to go soul winning. Don't tell me not to live for the souls of men. Don't tell me that. I've got a call from the inside. I've got a call from the outside. And I've got a call from above. And bless God, I aim to answer that call. But I don't feel called. Do it anyhow. And I said number four. There's a call from beneath. I'd like to finish the sermon now. I don't want to go any farther. I've enjoyed the first three points. I shall not enjoy this one. This is the hardest point of any sermon that I preach. There's a call from beneath. My daddy was an alcoholic in Dallas, Texas. He was a bartender for eight years, part-time. 
at the Hunt Saloon right across the street from the Dallas Seminary. In eight years, not one of those students walked across the street till that drunk how to be saved. Brother, if that's Christianity, the Pope is a Presbyterian. I wouldn't give you a dime for all those theology professors and applied psychology professors and ministerial aspirants. Sit over there and study their, their theology and let the world go to hell. <coughs> New Year's Eve, 1949. I was pastor 20 miles from here. A little country church. I got burdened from my daddy. Got in the car that morning. December 31st, 1949. Drove to Dallas, Texas on Swiss Avenue. Live Oak Avenue it was. Swiss and Live Oak are one block apart. Across from Dallas Seminary. Walked in my big 235 pound, 6 foot 3 inch. Muscle bound daddy was sitting at the bar drunk. I walked up, big loose leaf Scofield Bible about the size of that beside my hand. I walked up and I said, Daddy, I want you to come with me. And my daddy cursed me and he said, no, Blankety blank, some of blank, I don't know, I'll go with you. I said, Daddy, tomorrow's Sunday, New Year's Day, 1950. I want you to come with me down to East Texas, Marshall, Texas. I want you to hear me preach tomorrow. He cursed and said, I don't know about it, son of a blank. I'm about to go ahead and some blank preaching. And I said, Daddy, I weigh 140 pounds, 141 pounds, and you weigh 235. But you and I are going to have a ballroom brawl right now because I'm, I'm going to whip you and take you down there. Are you going to whip me and not go? But we're going to have a brawl right here in front of these people in this bar. He agreed to go. I sobered him up. I don't like to drive down Highway 30. 80, 80, that's the one of you. I don't like to drive down that street. My daddy and I drove down Highway 80. It's just a few blocks up here. New Year's Eve, about 5 o'clock, 1949. I sobered him up, took him to the watch night service that night. Last part of the watch night service, we boarded buses and went around Marshall and Longview and Gladewater and Atlanta, Texas, and Jefferson, Texas, and Henderson, Texas, and St. Carol's, and the witness. I looked over my daddy. I said, Daddy, did you ever have this much fun on New Year's Eve before? And my daddy said, Son, this is the happiest New Year's Eve I've ever spent in my life. See, my daddy left my mama and me, and mama reared me alone. He was always the neighborhood drunk. Next Sunday morning, next morning I preached, January 1st, 1950. My dad said, right over there, second row, second me, and where you are, sir. I never prayed so hard in my life. My daddy clutched the pew and tears went and that rolled down his cheeks. My one-legged deacon, Mr. L.G. Eves, put his arm around my dad and said, Mr. Howes, don't you want to be saved? And my dad said, yes, I'm going to be, but not this morning. That afternoon I took a walk, the pasture beside the parsonage, down through the pasture, and I said, Daddy, I'd rather see you saved than anything in the whole world. I told him how to be saved. He said, son, I'm not going to get saved today. But he said, I'm going to go back to Dallas and sell out. Everything I've got, I'm going to come down to Marshall, buy me a little fruit stand or a little grocery store of some kind. My dad lost a grocery store in depression by bankruptcy. He said, son, I'm going to come down here. I'm going to get saved. I'm going to let you baptize me. I said, that sounds good enough for me. He said, I promise you, son, in the spring, I'm going to let you baptize me. I'm going to get saved. I can't now. I've got too many things. I've got to get, get straightened out. But he said, in the spring, I took him back, let him out on the corner of Hall Street in San Jacinto, in the Hall Street in, in the Haskell in Dallas, Texas. Brian, Brian and Hall. Last thing my daddy said, son, I'll let you baptize me in the spring. That was January 2nd, 1950. The morning of May 12th, the phone rang. A man said, my name is Smith. Is this Reverend Hiles? I said, this is Brother Hiles. He said, your alcohol father just dropped dead of a heart attack. 